While Elsa technically weakened back into a tropical storm overnight, Florida's Gulf Coast is still feeling her wrath. Elsa is currently headed north, lashing the state with heavy rains and winds. Our Laura Podesta reports on how locals and officials are preparing. Elsa is moving its way up along Florida's west coast. The storm is headed for the state's Big Bend. Maximum sustained winds now estimated to be 70 miles per hour and there are potential for higher gusts. Watches and warnings are in place in much of the state and extend into the Carolinas. If you look at how lopsided this storm is, anything to the east of the eye will have some storm impacts for sure. Elsa's outer bands lash the keys on Tuesday. The rain's coming at all angles. You can see by the palm trees that it's blowing everywhere. It's coming at all angles. Many residents said storms are a fact of life in the Sunshine State. Being here so many years, I think, we have them here and there, and it's like you kind of get used to it. This is a paradise that everybody loves so much. This is the price that we pay. Some people don't like it. I'm a local myself. I love it. Foul weather forced rescue crews to suspend work at the site of the Surfside condo collapse, but the area was spared a direct hit from the storm. Laura Podesta, CBS News. So we want to talk a little bit more about the impact of the storm in Surfside. Brooke Schaefer is from our Miami station and joins us now from Surfside. So, Brooke, uh, you know, what's going on at the site right now? Do we know when, if they haven't already, they'll resume the rescue effort there? Well, they have resumed that search and rescue effort, Anne Marie. They did have to take a couple of pauses yesterday because of bad weather in the area, because of lightning and thunder. I think their longest pause yesterday was about two hours as those crews had to get to safety, as you know, that bad weather really came through. But really, since yesterday afternoon, late afternoon, that search and rescue has continued. A bit of a break in the weather, certainly a bit of good news for those search and rescue teams out here. Do we have a sense of what sort of timeline they are working with? Um, you know, we know that with the uh, deliberate sort of bringing down of the other portion of the building, it's given workers a lot more freedom to move around. They're a lot safer now to go through the pile of rubble that is there, but they must have a set timeline. They're not going to be there forever. Have they talked a little bit about that at all? They haven't given us a specific timeline, but I know that you and I have talked about how painstakingly slow this process is. I mean, really right now, we're already on day 14 of search and rescue. And as you look at the video, you can see it is still a massive pile of rubble and still about 100 people, if not more, reportedly unaccounted for as of this morning. So there is still a lot of work to be done. At this point, though, they have not, no, they have not rather given us an exact timeline on exactly how long it'll take out here. But as we've been standing out here as well, close to the scene, we've seen several dump trucks heading down this road, heading to the collapse site. Those dump trucks are taking the pieces of debris after these first responders have sifted through it. They're taking it over to a field, and then any of those pieces that need to be logged for evidence will then be taken over to a warehouse. So a lot of steps in what we've been saying is a painstakingly slow process out here. Mm -hmm. and, and just quickly, because I don't think we've actually gone through it, where do things stand now in terms of numbers of unaccounted for and, and numbers of confirmed deceased? Well, at this point, we know that about 100 people are still reportedly unaccounted for. The mayor here in Miami-Dade mm -hmm. has been saying that unaccounted for number is fluid because they were getting those names from mm -hmm. loved ones, from friends, from maybe people who don't even live in the country. So they have been having to go through and kind of what they're saying, audit that list of unaccounted for. So that number kind of fluctuates a little bit. But right now they're saying a little bit more than 100 people still reportedly unaccounted for. But yesterday, a very difficult day in search and rescue. We learned that throughout the day, search teams were able to find eight more bodies. So that death toll here in Surfside now up to 36. Wow. And so other than the search and rescue operation, how has the weather impacted or the storm impacted the area where you're at otherwise? Has it just been sort of heavy downpour or are you seeing anything else? 
Yeah, it's really been pretty much heavy on and off rain. Thankfully, here in Surfside, I think we mentioned this yesterday, sort of a small win for these first responders. We were expecting the weather to be much worse. Thankfully, even with the effects from the tropical storm, these search teams only had to stop twice, which is pretty remarkable considering the effects of the storm that we are seeing across the state. So here in Surfside, minimal impacts. I did have a colleague down in Key West yesterday. They definitely saw a lot of rain and a lot of big waves and all of that. And really the impacts are gonna be along the water, uh, along the coast here in Florida. All right, Brooke Schaefer, thank you so much.